Hi everybody, this is a review of the HobbyMate Q100 Brush Quadcopter Kit. This is the Spectrum version, but it's also available in Futaba, FreeSky, and Radiolink versions. So let's see what we get in the box. Alright, so we've got a frame. It's plastic. Fairly rigid. Got four motors, two clockwise and two counterclockwise versions. We've got a whole bunch of props, 65 millimeters. 10 pairs total, both clockwise and counterclockwise versions also. Got a battery, single cell, 550 milliamp hours, 25C. Have a battery lead and some rubber bands. Okay, so in a little box we have a the flight controller. Has this version of course as I mentioned is the Spectrum version, so it's got the Spectrum satellite receiver. It's got a set of leads here for hooking up to a different receiver. On the back you have pads for soldering your motors on. There's the pads for the number one motor, number two, number three, and number four. Also have the main battery pads here. The positives on this side and the negatives on this side. You can see there's actually a board that can be equipped for a hexcopter. It also has motor pads for a fifth and sixth motor. On the front, it's got a bootloader option button, but this already has firmware on it. Also in the box, there is an FPV camera and transmitter. The camera is PAL and it's 600 TVL. The transmitter is 16 channels and it is 25 milliwatts and features a dipole antenna. I, I like that this doesn't have a cloverleaf on it because the cloverleafs on these little quads always get broken so the dipole is much more sturdy. On the transmitter it's 16 channels and it has a little button here to switch between the channels. I believe it has a couple little lights on here that indicates what channel you're on. The kit comes with a little sticker here you can put on your radio if you want. This shows the frequencies for the transmitter and the lights that would indicate what channel you're on. Also includes a couple pieces of heat shrink and a piece of double sided sticky tape. So now let's go ahead and put the kit together. Okay, first up we're going to solder on our power lead and our motor leads. The number two motor, which is in the upper right hand corner here, and the number three motor are going to get the black and wire wire motors. The number four motor and the number one motor are going to get the red and blue wires. So I'm going to flip this over, and of course at that point these are going to go over here, these are going to go over here number two and number three white and black number one and number four red and blue
All right, so the soldering was pretty easy. I just put a little bit of solder on each pad before I put the motor leads on. So pads number two and three got the white and black wires. You should note that the white wires are positive and the black wires are negative. And pads two and four got the red and blue wires and the red wire is positive and the blue wire is negative. Now I will piggyback the FPV transmitter leads on the motor leads as it uses the same battery voltage. All right, here we go. That soldering didn't take very long. I trimmed a little bit of wire off the transmitter power leads. Uh, they were a little long, uh, shortened them up. Plan to just fold it over the top like this. Power leads going out the back. Camera will be in front. Front right motor black and white as well as the back left and the other two obviously the blue and red all right so now it's just a time to assemble it on the frame well this worked out pretty good I've got the uh, FPV camera mounted up front here there's a little pocket here I put a little piece of that double-sided sticky tape down in that pocket to hold the FPV camera uh, the uh, board there's actually some clips on the frame that hold the board really securely in place I've got the FPV transmitter power piggybacked on the back of the battery leads. These motors fit in nice and snug. They won't be coming out. I put a little twist in the wires. I think it makes it a little neater when you uh, run the motor leads back. Of course, the cover is going to be going over the front part here, so some of this extra wire will, will be hidden. So now all i got to do is uh, hook up for the Spectrum version. It'll go up here in this... The satellite receiver will go up here in this front plug, and I'll do that next. All right, so I bound this satellite receiver uh, using another receiver that has a satellite port on it uh, to the channel on my radio that I'll be using for this quad. So all I have to do now is uh, plug this into the board, and uh, we'll go to clean flight and configure everything. Okay, here we are on the computer. If you haven't done it yet, we need to install clean flight. Clean Flight is a Chrome app and on Windows if you go to the Clean Flight configurator you would have install app here. I've already got it installed so I'm just going to click launch app. Plug in the quadcopter to the USB port. We'll connect. Now you can see that the quadcopter is reacting. Now, I don't have the battery plugged in yet so the USB is powering the board. So first thing I want to do is go over here and see what firmware is on. So we'll go to the CLI and down here at the bottom we'll just type version. <clears throat> Alright, so it's got clean flight, it's got alien flight F1 version 1.1.13 and this firmware was from June 6, 2016. Alright, so now we know <clears throat> which version of firmware it has. Go back over to setup. The first thing we want to do is to calibrate the accelerometers. So we'll calibrate those and you can see that the pitch and roll degrees is very low. Of course also remember you should be having this sitting on a flat surface when you do this. All right. okay, next tab down is ports. I didn't change anything here. Next tab is configuration. All right. So I like to have motor stop on. That way it does not spin the motors when armed. This is particularly important even if your motors are stopped and you're at zero throttle. If, there is, if the quadcopter tips over, it will want to spin the motors in order to try to correct it. Everything else is how it came from the factory. Next is fail safe. I like to have fail safe on, but I like to use the drop procedure, not the land procedure. So, and I go ahead and turn down the times on this pretty quickly. If it drops, it's a small quad. I don't want to try to land itself. I want to do it fairly quickly. I don't want it to fly for a few seconds and then drop. 
Next tab is PID tuning. These are the settings that came with it from the factory. I did not change these. Next setting is receiver. So I'll go ahead and plug in the quadcopter and turn on my transmitter. Now the props are off. Okay. You can see here as I move my right stick that the values are changing so everything's working right and you also so for your roll so this is your left and right aileron that's left that's right so you know the directions correct if it's not you reverse it on your radio pitch pulling back on the stick pushing forward on the stick yaw left rudder right rudder throttle up different auxiliary switches that's the gear switch on my radio this is the flap switch on my radio. This is a three position switch. And this is my auxiliary two switch on my radio. So you can see all of that's coming through. All that's working. If that's not the correct order, you can change it up here in the channel map. Next up is modes. All right, from the factory, it doesn't have any modes configured. So I'm gonna add angle mode and horizon mode. And I want this to be on my three-way switch. So I'm going to select, that was auxiliary two for both of those. So angle mode, I want to have it when I have the switch in the first position. And I want it to be horizon mode when it's in the second position. So see this little green indicator here. There's my first position. There's my second position. And my third position will be acro mode where both these modes are turned off. So I'll save that. Next up is adjustments. Nothing to save here. And in fact, we can go straight down to motors. And this is where we test the direction of our motors. So again, props are off. We're looking for the, at this diagram. Two and three are both counterclockwise. One and four are both clockwise. So turn on the switch and we'll just give enough throttle just to test the direction of the motors. And so I'm barely spinning and I can feel that each motor is turning the correct direction. So that means that we've got the motors in the right position and we've got them wired correctly. All right, so that's it. So let's put on the props and take it out for a flight. So here we are ready to go. I got the props on. I wanted to show you how this all worked out. So I've got the uh, camera up front, like I said, with a little piece of double-sided sticky tape at the bottom. Also put a little rubber band that I had around the top here. The FPV transmitter just got a little piece of double-sided sticky tape connecting it to the main board. It gives easy access to the FPV channel selector. I've got the Remembering this is the Spectrum version that I have. I've got the uh, Spectrum satellite receiver actually on the bottom here. Again, with another little rubber band holding it on. I could use a double-sided piece of sticky tape there also. But I think it works out good having that at the bottom. I got the battery up top here. Makes for easy connection. Uh, either way, you could either put the battery at the bottom and the receiver up top or vice versa, whatever you like got the props here so one of the things that I looked at on the FPV transmitter let me turn on the radio so it's got these little lights and so that that was so that's showing red green so that's a specific frequency on the FPV transmitter so let me get the little sheet so red green corresponds to frequency 5695. Now one thing you might note is that all these first channels, these first four and these second four, these are the race band frequencies. And the rest of the eight are a, a mix across the other bands. So depending on 
so I, so I think this is a good idea. Um, most folks have race band receivers now, but if not, if you have one of the older receivers, then likely one of these other frequencies are going to be within that range. So I think they were smart about how they set this up. Okay, here let's put on the top. Make sure the wire stays out of the way. All in all, it's a nice looking little quad. So, let's do some FPV in. Alright, real quick, I did want to measure the weight also. So the quadcopter without the battery, but this does include the receiver, weighs 46 grams. You add the battery, you're at 60, 61. Okay, so now let's go fly. I wanted to bring this outside for a minute just to show the punch out to you. I can't do that inside the house. It's a uh, little breezy out today. It's about 35 degrees Fahrenheit. But this thing is, I've got this in horizon mode right now. It's pretty stable. I mean, I'm not doing much on the sticks. But. You can see those 65 millimeter props on those eight and a half millimeter by 20 motors. They do pretty good. I don't want to get it too far away. It gets too small too quick. Let's see on the video. But all in all, this is a really nice little quad. I'm looking forward to my friends getting one of these. In a couple of these, we'll end up doing some indoor flights, some races, FPV indoors this winter. That'll be a lot of fun. Hoppy Mate, this is, seems like it's going to be a real good product. 
think you did it again. Good job. All right, I thought we'd try a little bit of acro flying. I've got two different profiles set up on my AUX2 switch. I have low rates, essentially, profile one in clean flight, and profile two in clean flight, I have high rates. So let's uh, do it in high rates for acro, and we'll give it a go. You can see there it flips really good. It's a little windy out today. This does great in the wind. It's about 40 degrees. Very acrobatic little flyer.